professor R Ashokamani director research and development Dhanalakshmi College of Engineering Tam from Chennai He is former professor and head of the department physics Anna University Chennai He is presently guiding three research scholars He has more than 44 years of UG and PG teaching experience and 33 years of research experience 14 research scholars have obtained doctorate under his guidance in the area of material science and solid state physics He has more than 150 research publications to his credit of which 90 are in international journals He has authored a book on solid state physics which is an international publication He has participated in several international conferences both in India as well as in foreign countries such as USA, UK, France, Germany, Italy and Yugoslavia. He has been a guest scientist at ICTP Italy several times. He is a fellow and treasurer of Tamil Nadu Academy of Sciences. Welcome to the UGC lecture series in applied electronics. We have been going through a course of lectures so far in this uh, topic on semiconductors and in the last lecture in this series this is intended for uh, the applied electronics students who do the physics of materials that is semiconducting materials in today's lecture we will be deriving the rectifier equation you know rectification is nothing but a alternating current being converted into a direct current so a pn junction or pnp or npn junction transistors can act as um, semiconducting devices such as um, rectifier amplifier oscillator and so on and the the pn junction is a two component system the pn junction will act as a half wave rectifier and the subject of semiconductor assumes lot of significance because of the fact that we have lots of uh, semiconducting devices now you take your computer the computers are made up of uh, semiconducting elements and uh, one can have um, this kind of uh, cell phone this also has semiconducting elements and so the transistors uh, whether the pn junction or npn or pnp configurations they are very important as i told you because it has um, several applications and in this uh, lecture we will be talking about simply a combination of uh, the p type material and the uh, n type material giving rise to a pn junction and we will be trying to obtain the current that is passing through the pn junction when you apply a forward bias or you apply a reverse bias before that in continuation with what we have been seeing we will be obtaining the expression for the width of the pn junction that we have seen already that is very important width of the pn junction and the extension of the ionic layers that is present around the p junction the pn junction the extension of the layers when you apply what happens the width of the layers when you apply a forward bias and when you apply a reverse bias these things are very important right that in fact they refer to the height of the potential barrier when you apply a forward bias what happens when you apply a reverse bias what happens so the, the height of the potential barrier barrier depends upon the width of the pn junction so ultimately the pn junction diode equation and let us uh, have a relook at uh, the pn junction and the depression region and you take a p type material this we have seen 
quite often in the earlier lectures for sake of continuity I am showing it again we have a p type material combined with a n type material and this is the line that separates the p type material and the n type material. As you be knowing by now when you combine the p side material and n type material when these two materials are combined there will be flow of the majority carriers from both sides and because of flow of the carriers what will happen is the electrons will combine the holes ultimately leaving ionic layers you have got uh, the negative ions on one side and positive ions on the other side and so you have um, a number of ionic layers on either side of the p n junction this is the p n junction the junction region on either side of the connecting region there will be a set of ionic layers right and you have got uh, positive ions here negative ions here and this width that you have got here is called the depletion region and it is called depletion region because it is depleted of free carriers you have free carriers here what is n type a n type semiconductor is one which has electrons as majority carriers and so you got electrons here the free electrons are available here and on the other hand in the p type material the majority carriers are holes they are found here right the holes are free holes are here free electrons are here look at this region this region does not have the free electrons or the free holes it is free from the free carriers that is the reason why it is called the depression region and the depression region plays a very important role in controlling the current that will flow across the pn junction. So, the important point is the depression region the width of the depression region or the that leads to the height of the potential barrier. For instance, if I say the depression region on this region becomes very large instead of two ionic layers suppose you have got four ionic layers what is the meaning of that. So, you have got a hole here if a hole comes here now this hole which is present here will experience a force of repulsion right because the ions are positively charged and the hole is positively charged and so this hole will experience a repulsive potential by the exerted by these layers right these you got two layers here. Now, as I told you if you have got four layers what will happen the repulsive potential experienced by the hole will become much larger as the, the width of the junction the width of the ionic layers when it becomes larger and larger the repulsive potential will become larger. On the other hand if the width becomes smaller what will happen supposing you got instead of two layers you got only one layer then if a hole comes then the hole will experience a lesser repulsive potential. Now, at this point I want you to think the other case namely on the p side the holes are majority carriers. What about the minority carriers which are not shown in the picture the minority carriers are electrons. Supposing an electron comes here what will happen if the electron comes here the electron will be attracted by the ionic layers right and again the argument that I placed in front of you earlier namely when a hole comes here the hole will experience a repulsive potential and the repulsive potential keeps on increasing when the number of ionic layers becomes larger and larger. On the other hand if you have a minority carrier such as an electron suppose an electron comes here then what about the electron the electron will experience a attractive potential because you have got positive ions here right the positive ions will attract the electron. Now, if the number of layers become larger what happens the attractive potential experience the electron will become larger therefore, the width of the junction region is important or the number of layers whether they are uh, positively charged the positively charged ionic layers or negatively charged ionic layers on the other side they will give you the kind of uh, potential barrier that the particle will experiencing or the potential well that will be experienced by the particle. I will 
tell you more exactly what we mean by potential well and potential barrier as uh, we proceed further. Anyway, the depression region plays a very important role because it is going to control the current which is flowing across the p n junction. So, this we showed in the last lecture we saw that uh, theta naught is the height of the potential the potential that uh, a particle has to overcome suppose a hole is here the hole has to overcome a potential barrier whose height is uh, theta naught okay? that is the height that the potential with this uh, reference 0 potential at x equal to 0 at x equal to 0 the potential is 0 here the potential is theta naught. Okay? So, with this as the reference is called the contact potential and uh, this theta naught that I showed will be equal to theta naught 2 at x equal to x p plus x n because you know you got um, this is a x p plus x n this is x equal to 0 the origin the width of the ionic layers they extend up, up, up to x p the junction region the center of the junction and then you go from x p to x p plus x n that is what you have here right. Okay. Now, therefore, at the point x p plus x n where the potential is theta naught that will be equal to minus e n d and n d refers to the number of donor atoms right any the donor atoms right x p plus x n to the power of 2 that is the x p plus x n refers to the width of the junction region by 2 epsilon plus e into x p by epsilon into n a plus n d that is the number of uh, acceptor atoms plus the number of donor atoms multiplied by x p plus x n minus e into x p square by 2 epsilon into n a plus n d, where n a and n d again are the number of acceptor atoms and the number of donor atoms. Acceptors are the one that uh, give rise to holes and the donors will donate the electrons. When no external voltage is applied, the total current I will be equal to 0. What is the total current? The total current is made up of I 1 i 2, i 3 and i 4. So, therefore, i will be the sum of i 1, i 2, i 3 and i 4 that will be equal to 0. What are i 1 and i 2? They are the majority carrier currents. The currents due to holes from p type to n type the majority carriers on the n side are the electrons. So, the majority carrier flow from the n side namely electron flow from the n side to the p side that constitutes the current I 2 then the minority carrier currents are I 3 and I 4. Okay. That should be equal to 0 when the p n junction is not biased. So, I 1 is assumed to be the whole current from the p region to the n region. How do you calculate your I 1 now? So, I 1 will be so you can have if p p is the equilibrium hole density that is the number of holes on the p side is p p in the p type material only those carriers whose energy is equal to or greater than e theta naught only those carriers those holes which have the potential greater than e into theta naught will be able to climb up and go to the other side. So, how many will come out come to the other side? So, i 1 will be given by or directly proportional to p p the hole density multiplied by e to the power of minus e theta naught by k t. e theta naught by k t is nothing like uh, e to the power of minus, minus w by k t or e to the power of minus e by k t that you would have come across in the Boltzmann statistics. Under the conditions of temperature that you have got here it is enough if you apply the, the Maxwell Boltzmann statistics that is what we are doing here we are applying the Maxwell Boltzmann statistics. And so, we now say the number of holes that will be flowing from this p side to n side will be given by the expression which I showed earlier. What is p p? p p is the hole density that you have got here on the p side p refers to holes and p type. So, we have p p you have got a p type material we are talking about majority carriers which are holes that are positive 
and so the positive particles on the p side that is a pp the hole density out of pp holes how many will be able to go to the n side is given by an expression of this kind okay and the c1 is the proportionality constant so we have the expression i1 is equal to c1 times the expression that you have got here at this point we will have a break and we'll pass on to other contributions after the break Welcome back at the break. I told you that from the P region, how many holes will be able to go to the, the N region that is given by the current I1 to be equal to C1 times C1 is the constant, right? Pp multiplied by e to the power of minus e theta naught by kt. A similar expression will be there for I2 also because again they are the majority carriers that is the electrons going from the n n that is the electrons going from the this side the n region to the p region. So, I 2 will be C 2 times n n e to the power of minus e theta naught by k t okay? that is the number of electrons that you have got the electron density is n n out of n n electrons how many will be able to go to from the n region to the p region is given by I 2. Okay? Now, the electrons have to overcome the barrier the point that uh, should be understood is the there is the opposing potential the electron will experience a repulsive potential it has to overcome the barrier. So, whereas I 3 and I 4 are the minority carrier currents what do you mean by potential barrier what I mean by potential barrier is the following if you have a particle here it may be electron a hole or a classical system and now the particle wants to go from this region to this region this is the P region this may be the n region and is the uh, you know the width of the p n junction. So, this has to overcome the barrier right has to overcome the barrier on the other hand is called a potential barrier on the other hand we have what is called a potential well what is a potential well you have the ground below that ground you suppose you dug a well you have a well here and then that is a potential well it is a it is attractive potential. Okay. Now, this is a potential well this is a the other the other way around it is a potential barrier the opposite of uh, potential well is the, the opposing potential the attractive potential right the potential well. So, uh, for the minority carrier the, there will be a potential well because uh, the electron will be facing a number of uh, positive ionic layers as I told you the minority carriers here on the electrons when the electron comes here it will be facing positively charged ionic layers you got positive ions. So, the electron will be attracted by positive ions similarly the hole you got a you got a electron here this electron uh, you have here it will be facing a, a repulsive potential by the ions, but uh, for the minority carrier you got a hole here the minority carrier hole will experience a attraction similarly a minority carrier electron will experience a attraction. So, the currents coming from minority carriers are simply proportional to the density whatever electrons you have got that they will simply flow into the, the other region therefore, the minority carrier currents or uh, I 3 will be directly proportional to n p n is the number of electrons on the p side and similarly the number of uh, uh, holes on the n side. So, the minority carriers currents will be simply directly proportional to the number density. So, when the number number of electrons on the p side n p will give rise to I 3 the more number of uh, I mean the holes are there then be more number of currents that is I 4. So, these minority carrier currents are simply directly proportional to the number density. So, P p and N p are the electron and hole concentrations on the p and n sides. Now, this is what we are having. Now, supposing I give a forward bias the p n junction is forward bias 
what do you mean by forward biasing? P is connected to the positive and N is connected to the negative. If P is connected to the positive, what will happen? The holes will be repelled, right? This is, this is given a positive bias. Holes will be repelled. When the hole is repelled, what will happen? The hole will annul or neutralize the negative ions. And similarly, the electron will neutralize the positive ions, thereby decreasing the, the depletion region width. The depletion region width will be decreased. Okay. The point to be understood is when you apply a forward bias, you P is uh, given a positive bias, N is connected to the negative side of the battery, thereby electrons will be repelled from here this end, the electron will go and uh, cancel the positive charge here. Similarly, the hole will cancel the negative charge here. So, the width of the junction region will become smaller. When the width becomes smaller, the opposing potential comes down. The value of the opposing potential comes down. Supposing I had theta naught, now it becomes theta naught minus theta. So, the current that will be having now will be from theta naught will be having the current as um, theta naught minus theta. Okay theta naught minus theta that is the height of the opposing potential earlier it was theta naught now it has come down because you are applying a forward bias. So, the current now will be I will be minus C 3 into N P plus C 4 into P N plus C 1 into P P plus C 2 into N N e to the power of minus E into this is the important point it becomes uh, from theta naught it goes to theta naught minus theta by K T. Okay that is what you have when you apply a forward bias. On the other hand, when you apply a reverse bias, what will happen? P is um, applied a negative potential, P is uh, connected to a negative potential. Negative means the holes will be attracted to the negative region. So, the width of the junction region will become larger. So, electrons will go in this direction. Okay. The, this side is uh, N is positively biased. Okay the electrons will be attracted to the positive polarity. So, the um, electrons will move in this direction similarly holes will move in this direction. So, the ionic layer density the width of the junction region will become much larger when you apply a negative bias. So, from theta naught earlier it went to theta naught minus theta now it will become theta naught plus theta. Now, therefore, what I write now you, it becomes the current that is uh, will be flowing when you apply a reverse bias will be of this kind. The important point that you have to see is uh, you have an exponential relation having e to the power of minus e into theta naught plus theta earlier it was theta naught minus theta. Now, when you reverse bias it becomes theta naught plus theta by k t. So, if the reverse bias that you apply is very large what will happen? that is what I am having here if the negative potential applied to the p side is very large the second term in the above will become 0. When theta becomes very large e to the power of you got e to the power of minus infinity right if theta is very large this, this term will become 0 that is what you have now. So, when theta becomes very large when you apply a large reverse bias this term can be cancelled. So, resulting in an expression of this kind, then this current that you have got due to minority carriers is called the um, uh, you know I naught the reverse saturation current. You will see in the diagram which you will be following now, you write I naught is the maximum current for a large negative bias voltage and is called the um, reverse saturation current. This current contribution is called the um, reverse saturation current and coupling the above equations we now get the ultimate relation that we tried namely the junction rectifier equation comes out as I is equal to I naught into e to the power of E theta naught by k t minus 1. What is I is the current that will be flowing across the p n junction I naught is the reverse saturation current and theta naught is the potential that the particle will be experiencing when you apply no bias or when no bias is applied theta naught is the potential experience of the particle it may be electron or a hole and you got by 
that divided by k t k is the Boltzmann constant at a given temperature t minus 1. So, this equation is of immense importance and it can be graphically represented as follows. The current voltage relation will be having this form this is whatever, whatever you have got uh, in terms of mathematics that will become uh, that will assume uh, the graphical representation will become like this. So, when you apply a forward bias the current will increase it keeps on increasing, but when you apply a reverse bias it um, gets saturated and when you increase the bias voltage still further it will lead to what is called a breakdown. So, this is the voltage that you apply when the current becomes very large in the negative direction the current becomes very large it is called a breakdown voltage. When you apply a forward bias right forward bias means what P will be connected to the positive and N will be connected to the negative that is called the forward bias. So, when you apply a forward bias the current increases okay. when you apply a reverse bias the current decreases and then you ultimately when you have what is called a um, reverse saturation current this is called the current gets saturated right saturated then if you increase the negative bias still further that means p is connected to the negative and the n is connected to the positive and uh, the voltage applied becomes very large the junction will break down it is called um, the breakdown of the p n junction the voltage required for for a breakdown is called a um, breakdown voltage the above gives the current versus voltage that is what you have the relation. It, so, this is a characteristic curve for the I V characteristics right. In all the semiconductor electronics whether you have the P n or N P n in all the junction diodes finally, what you look for is the for applying using it as a rectifier or amplifier oscillator you have to you will end up with what is called a current versus voltage relation there is a that is the relation connecting how the current is um, uh, changing as a function of voltage and you should have a graph connecting I and voltage the current and voltage. So, the I V characteristics is, is very important that is what you get now this equation that you had is called the junction diode equation this is of great importance and uh, let me now summarize the lecture which was delivered today it consists of the following points the width of the p n junction depends upon the concentration of the impurity atoms. Secondly the junction width will become very narrow if the doping concentrations are increased on either side. The third point is the junction will extend deeper into that region which is Leastly doped. The last point is the rectifier equation gives the current versus voltage relation for the diode. We will now pass on to the question session. We have the following questions. Question number 1 give the expression for the width of the p n junction. What happens to the junction width if the two sides are heavily doped if both are heavily doped. What is the name of the heavily doped p n junction? The last question is whether the p n junction extends to the same extent on either side comment on this with this we come to the end of the last lecture in this series on semiconductors. Thank you.